Hello again, welcome back to the kitchen table. Um, today I'm going to be doing a short video on trying to avoid a potentially nasty situation uh, where your quad is descending. Uh, and we'll look at signs of it and how to avoid it and so on and so forth. But before I get into that, um, I'd just like to say a quick thank you to all those people who've sent me um, little messages saying get well soon for my youngest daughter who as some of you know um, fractured her ankle at the weekend on Sunday uh, she's doing fine she's um, she's rocking her purple cast which she's very proud of and uh, she's been an absolute trooper so thank you for those messages that's really appreciated and uh, and also just a, a public thank you to the to the staff in the emergency department and the trauma clinic at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford because you treated her fantastically and uh, we thank you very much. So, um, yes, and this evening uh, a Spanish cerveza is in, my, um, is in my glass. So cheers, quick uh, moistener first as my throat is still not quite fixed. Mm, very nice. <clears throat> so today I want to talk about descending and specifically descending at fast uh, and why that's not necessarily a good idea. Basically, if you've had your vision for a while or any other quad, and you may have noticed that sometimes if you're coming into a descent, uh, you you pick up some sort of, you know, vibrations like this, or, you know, you, you get a, sort of a twitchiness. And um, what that is, of course, is as you're descending, your rotors are pushing air this way, your prop wash, if you like, and you're descending through it. So there is an element of choppy air. Now that's fine, um, it will give you wobbly video, um, for example, but normally if you're coming down at a reasonably slow pace or you're doing it uh, with uh, an element of lateral movement, nothing, nothing to worry about. However, you have to be careful because you can get into a situation which is called vortex ring state or also sometimes known as settling with power. Now I am as far removed from an aerodynamicist as it's probably possible to get, but I, I'll give you my very basic understanding. If anyone is an aeronautical engineer or an aerodynamicist, and, and you want to give a more uh, technical explanation of what I'm saying, or correct me if I've got it completely wrong, which is a distinct possibility, stick it in the comments and let me know. But as far as I understand it in very simple terms, what can happen is as you're descending through your rotor wash, prop wash, effectively you can get into a situation where normally across the whole blade, air is moving in this direction down. You can get into a situation where if you're descending into your prop wash in certain states, the air in the inner part of the, the rotor disc is actually gonna start with relative to the blade moving upwards. So there'll be part of the dip blade here where the air is going in an upward direction and part where it's going down and you get like a a crossing point at some point and at that point there you get a nasty little vortex and of course as this is spinning around you get a ring of vortices and those vortices can reduce an awful lot of the lift and crucially if you just add power as you would normally to get out of it it doesn't work so what you can find is if you're coming down straight down with no lateral movement at a fast descent rate you can get into this situation and of course your reaction would be to hit the throttle and try and pull out of the, the, the steep descent that may not work okay because all in fact you're doing is you're still creating prop wash you're still falling through it so what you need to do is you need to move out of the prop wash which basically means use your right stick and go in any direction other than straight down um, that will move you out of the wash. The wash that's causing this upward mo movement here and the, and the, the vortex uh, will, will move to the side and you will regain control and then you can throttle out um, and arrest the descent. Uh, it's happened to me a couple of times, um, once on a very early flight, because as you do, you go out, you test these things, how fast it go up, wow, great, how fast it come down. Oh, that's a bit, and luckily I was high enough that I, I kind of, managed to get out of it by accident. There may have been a bit of a breeze, which will of course blow 
the prop wash away. Um, um, it's also happened to me when I've been um, concentrating more on filming than on piloting. And I think that's a bit of a risk with a flying camera. You can focus on one thing and not the other. And so trying to get a nice cool kind of shot of things coming down and suddenly I'm coming down too fast and not moving any with any sort of lateral mo movement. And we had a, I had a, a, a near miss. So my top tips would be number one, um, if you're gonna come down and you need to do it quickly, give some right stick input. Either just, you know, move at a slope to go down in any direction, or alternatively, if you're, you know, if you've at that stage where you can actually put a bit of a coordinated turn in with the right stick and your, and then you could always come down in a spiral. Any of those things that means you're not coming down directly into your prop wash will see you very uh, much safer than coming straight down. For filming purposes, a massively top tip that I got from somebody else, which I think is brilliant, is if you want to do a, a descending shot for the effect of whatever that effect is, then why not do a, an ascent and then reverse it when you're doing the edit? Because then you don't have to worry about it. And there's no issues with with um, with coming down too fast. And of course, if you if you if you go up quickly and reverse it, it can look like a rapid descent, which would be a, a, a great little tip there. Um, as long as you weren't filming anything where it was obvious it was going backwards, like you know, like cars on a road or something. But certainly, it's something to watch out for. Uh, it's not a you know. If you start to see these vibrations and juddering, then you are probably going through your wash and you probably want to either move out of it or not descend any faster. And that's the reason why if you get into an auto land situation on return to home, for example, you'll see that, you know, it, it looks like it's taking a fair while to come down. and uh, It's doing that deliberately so as not to get into this. So that's a very brief um, explanation of settling with power or vortex ring state and what can cause it and how you can avoid it um, fingers crossed you don't have to but if you get into a situation where you're descending you seem to be still descending despite having power you could be in that state try giving it some right stick and moving out of that column of disturbed air that you're in see if you suddenly regain control because even in gps mode you know you could be in a situation where she keeps on coming down i hope it doesn't happen to you Thanks again for watching. Thank you again for your good wishes for little Rosie. And um, yeah, I'm going to hope to do another video um, tomorrow, actually. And I'll talk about how how to balance the Rotopixel gimbal, or at least the way I did it, which may not be the right way or the official way, but it seems to have worked for me. So until then, thanks very much for watching and uh, see you again soon. Bye-bye.